hello my favorite chemistry people. We are now up to module 13. Way to go and make it this far in your chemistry curriculum. So module 13 today we are covering pages 417 through 423. So obviously in covering six pages in only 15 minutes I'm going to cover just the basics so make sure that you're reading it on your own as well. All right before we get into thermodynamics of this module we need to first cover the first law of thermodynamics, which we learned way back in module, hmm, I wonder, I'm gonna say maybe module three. All right, and that is, you probably remember, or it sounds familiar, that energy cannot be created or destroyed, it can only change forms. So in our study of thermodynamics, we're gonna be talking about energy, and energy can be either given off in the reaction or it can be absorbed and taken in in the reaction but remember this doesn't mean that we're creating or getting rid of any energy it's just changing forms so let's talk about that a little bit more remember there are two types of energy there is potential energy potential energy and this is um, kind of thought of as stored energy so it is either stored up in the reactants or it can be stored in the products. The products can end up having more energy stored in them than the reactants did. So it can be stored in the reactants or the products. And then if energy is changing forms, it can change from potential energy to, do you remember, kinetic energy. Kinetic means moving. The energy can go back and forth from potential to, to kinetic. Kinetic means moving. So when we're thinking of moving energy, remember that as things get heated up, they are moving faster. So the kinetic energy that we're talking about in these chemical reactions comes through as heat or sometimes light as well. We're mainly going to be talking about heat energy in here. So kinetic energy is the heat that is either given off or sometimes um, absorbed from the surroundings in the chemical reactions. All right, and you probably are somewhat familiar with these terms, exothermic and endothermic. Let's talk about exothermic reactions first. So exothermic reactions release heat. They release heat, and so as your book tells you, so you can think of energy as a product in exothermic reactions. Okay, so for reaction as exothermic, it is releasing heat, it is giving it off, it is a product of the reaction. And let me just add, just to kind of go in line with the first law of thermodynamics, that it is releasing uh, kin the kinetic heat. Whoops, green doesn't work. Throw that away. Why do I keep markers that don't work? Okay, so when we're releasing heat, we're releasing the kinetic energy. And that means that the energy started, we didn't just create it, but it started in the reactants as the potential energy. Um, also about exothermic reactions, I'll give you an example. An example would be HCl plus NaOH. And in our fun study of acids and bases, you learned that HCl then would be um, recognized as an acid. NaOH would be a base. And this would produce water and a salt. And sure enough, it actually produces our favorite salt, NaCl, and water, which we often write as HOH when we're uh, balancing. But right now, I'll write it as H2O. Okay, so if this is an exothermic uh, reaction, it is also giving off heat to its surroundings. So we're going to add and think of energy as being a product. Okay? And under here, I'll also write, so this is heat energy. 
And then you can also just remember and keep in mind that we didn't just create this heat from nowhere. It came from um, the potential energy. So potential energy was stored in the reactants. Um, so exothermic reactions, um, the reaction gives off heat or gets hot. And next is endothermic reactions. So this was exothermic. Now endothermic does the opposite. It absorbs heat. And so the reaction actually gets cold because it's absorbing heat from the surroundings. So when you touch it, it feels cold. Endothermic absorb energy. So think of energy as a reactant for these types of reactions. And an example would be 2NH4SCN plus BAOH2 H2O8. Good gravy. I got this example from the book and they sure it's a complicated one. Yields 2NH4OH and BASCN2 and eight waters. Okay, so if this complicated reaction is uh, endothermic. It is absorbing energy. So we think of energy as a <clears throat> reactant. So we would add energy, kinetic energy to the, um, to the reactant side. Okay. All right. And then here, I'll write under here. So this is kinetic energy. It's absorbing the heat from the surroundings, so it's gonna get cold. And then the energy doesn't just disappear, but it instead becomes stored in the products. So over here then, we would have the potential energy. Okay? And we should add then, make it clear, that endothermic reactions get cold. All right, let's erase this, and we're gonna talk about a new term called enthalpy. Enthalpy. Let me get a piece of paper towel. <clears throat> erase, erase, erase. So I'm just coming off of a lovely spring break. This is my first video in about two weeks. So I hope I'm not too rusty in my speaking and explaining. We shall move on to enthalpy. Okay, enthalpy means the energy stored in a substance. And it is written as H. Don't ask me why. Although I guess there is an H in the middle of that word. So I guess they just kind of went H and labeled it H. All the other good letters were taken. Okay, so delta H is usually what we are figuring out in chemistry. So delta H means the change in enthalpy, which is the change that accompanies the change that accompanies a chemical reaction. All right, and here are the energy units to remember that we have already talked about. Energy units, remember, we have one calorie, which equals four. 4.184 joules. 
And because we usually uh, are figuring things out in very large amounts of energy, we will often use one kilocalorie, which of course would be equal to 1,000 calories, and one kilojoule, which would be equal to 1,000 joules. As you know, because you use kilo all the time, so you remember that kilo means 1,000. All right, now if delta H at the end of the reaction, if the change in enthalpy is positive, The reaction, delta H is positive, actually I'm not gonna put a comma. Delta H is positive for endothermic reactions. Endothermic reactions, R, X, N, S. That's how I will abbreviate reactions. And delta H is negative for exo thermic reactions. Okay, so for example, if we figure that delta H equals, if delta H equals negative 700 kilojoules per mole, it means the reaction is exothermic and produces 700 kilojoules for every mole, because it was per mole, so for every one mole of reactant consumed. For every mole of reactant consumed, 700 kilojoules of energy was produced. Now, if that seems a little backwards to you about that negative sign, think about it like this. The reaction itself is losing 700 kilojoules of energy, and so that 700 kilojoules of energy is being given off into the surroundings as heat. Okay, so the reaction is negative because it's losing that energy and then it's going out into the surroundings as 700 positive kilojoules of energy and um, therefore heating things up. All right, okay, let's erase this and hopefully get to one more topic. So that's enthalpy, and we will be solving for changes in enthalpy soon in the next video. And right now we will discuss how you determine enthalpies of reactions. Okay, so next is determining delta H for a chemical reaction. So there are a few ways to do this. One way to do this is by experiment. And some of you who are not in my physical class may do this experiment um, in other classes that you're in. For my class, I have never been able to find where to buy lye, which seems silly, but one of the um, reactants that you have to use is lye or a powder drain cleaner. And if you remember at the beginning of our class, I thought I bought powder drain cleaner. I did buy powder drain cleaner, but it didn't work in one of our reactions. So I've given up in trying to buy the right stuff. So to see how you do this by experiment, you would just have to read or see experiment 13.1. We're gonna do a different lab. Okay, and then the other way that you can determine delta H for a chemical reaction is by using bond energies. Um, and we are gonna have to stop right there. So in my next video, we will discuss what bond energies are and how you can use them to figure out the change in enthalpy for a specific chemical reaction. So that's what you have to look forward to next time. 
and I hope I have, you have a great rest of your day.